there. Welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. I got a lot of fun DIY home decor. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> that was fun, right? <laughs> I have a lot of fun DIY home decor projects for you today. I'm only human. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Today we're going to be working on farmhouse home decor using mostly Dollar Tree supplies. So let's get started with project number one. For this project, we're going to start out making a tiered tray. I'm going to use this circle sign from Dollar Tree. And for my base, I'm going to use this that I got from Hobby Lobby. It was $3.99. You could use anything from base from Dollar Tree, like a charger plate or anything like that. As I said, I'm using this circle on top. They do have this other shape, and you could use both of these to make a tiered tray if you wanted to do that option. Now for the center post of this tiered tray, you can use one of these 8 inch tall chunky slat boards from Dollar Tree. Of course, you all know we can also use, um, here's what it looks like. We could also use the wood from the toilet bowl plunger and cut that to about 8 inches tall. You all know, again, I'm going to use something different, which is one of these spindles. I've got quite a supply, um, but I am going to cut it down to the 8 inches tall. And then I'm also going to use two of these 10 inch tall chunky slat boards from Dollar tree for one of our projects today. I'm just going to cut both of these directly in half. I'll use three of those. I'm going to use this little hanging wood sign from Dollar Tree. I'm going to use one of these wood houses as well from Dollar Tree. I'm going to cut about an inch off of it though. You don't have to do that if you don't have access to cutting anything. You could leave it as tall as it is. And I'm going to use one of these. We all remember these when they came out a couple years ago. You could use two of those other wood pieces, but I'm just using this because I like that it is a little bit, you know, slender in design. And I've already, of course, got all the stuff taken off of it. And then off camera, I'm going to take all these pieces knee cut and I'm going to cut them with my jigsaw. Okay, everything's cut and prepped, and off the back of this, I took the easel off and the staples and all that stuff. You can see my spindles cut. I've cut the house down, and I even sanded around the edges and kind of rounded everything off. On this house tag, um, I cut the top off so it was more like a tag and then here's my three pieces of wood I cut from those two long 10 inch slat pieces of wood. Here's that little sign I've taken the rope off and so now we're ready to begin. So before we go into assembling this tray, a design option for you, you could leave this circle sign just like it is with the metal word on top. Believe me, I thought about it and then you would just wood glue it together to the post and it will look perfectly wonderful. So let's make our tray. What I've got here starting out with, I've got my uh, circle sign all cleaned and sanded and everything and what I've done is I traced it on uh, with a piece of just copy paper and I because I need to find the center of my circle so I traced it cut it out I'm gonna fold it in half and then of course in half again and it's gonna give me my center point of my wood piece here this is the easiest way my brain can handle it <laughs> I'm gonna lay it on here and I've got this great big doll needle and I'm just gonna poke a hole right through that center point and I'm gonna do it on both sides because I'm gonna wood glue and screw this together. Wood glue will hold perfectly wonderful, of course, but you know, if I'm gonna be selling it, I just want that extra stability. So I'm just marking off the back, the center, and then tracing around my post so I know exactly where I'm gonna put my two screws, because this is a slap board, right? Can't put my screws in the center, there's space. <laughs> and then I'm making the same thing on the front, just marking the center with my ruler and drawing around it, just so that, and measuring it and everything, just so that I am exactly centered front and back. Here's my screw holes I drilled with my drill bit. Um, you can see it there ready to go and then I put two holes here as well I held the post to the bottom piece and then screwed it together making those two holes now here I am using some wood glue and then I'm gonna line up those two holes and then I'm gonna wood glue the top part to the top post as well but to line up this, what I've done is put my drill bit through the top of that wood piece and then I'm going to just poke it down into that spindle and then I'm just going to pull my drill out just so I know that those holes are lined up. Then once the wood glue is set, then I'm going to start just, you know, screwing my screws in with my drill here. Top and bottom. I've got two going into the bottom and then one going into the top. And I chose screws with really flat, flat heads, just so as we get to the top, you know, it's not going to poke up or anything like that. And if you'll notice, I didn't paint any of this. I left everything in its natural color. I liked the color. Normally I go paint everything. I didn't want to do that. 
I do, however, want to cover the top. So that pattern piece of paper I used earlier to find the center of my board, I traced it onto a piece of scrapbook paper here. And then I cut that just about a quarter of an inch shorter all the way around. So you see a little bit of the edging of the wood on that top piece. And then I'm taking this paper to my sewing machine. I'm sewing on it like it's regular fabric, just a size 10 needle on a stitch length of four using all polyester thread because that's what my machine likes. This is what it looks like. We'll go a little bit detail a little bit later for you. And then I'm opening my scissors here and I'm using the end of my scissor blades to scrape along the edges, give it a little bit of a roughened texture here. And then I'm gonna use my Beacon Fabri-Tac glue and we're going to glue this to the top of our tiered tray. I just love this collage paper. I chose it because of the colors we'll be using. Here's what it all looks like. And that makes this project complete. So let's move right into project number two. We'll take a look at everything in its entirety at the very end. So here is my wood house here, of course. And I'm also going to use one of these wood hearts that came from Dollar Tree at Valentine's. And of course, one of my favorite Dixie Belle chalk paints in the color Drop Cloth. And we're just going to paint around the edges. We'll be using, you know, painting and then using some paper on all the projects today. Of course, if you didn't want to use scrapbook paper, you could just paint it It's in its entirety and not worry about that. Okay, so of course that's an option for you. You all know I like to add my little bit of scrapbook paper to it. I'm going to paint the heart and I'm going to leave the heart just painted. I'm not going to add any paper to that. And then once all the painting's done, I'm going to go ahead and distress everything. I had a subscriber ask me what uh, electric sander I use. I use this Black & Decker. I like it because it's got that little pointy end on it and you can get right into stuff. It's really, uh, really, really light. You can use it one-handed. I use it in the house all the time because it has a little bagger on it. Here's what everything looks like all distressed. And here's my papers. I'm going to kind of go in some aqua tones today. So I cut it again just about an eighth of an inch short all the way around to fit in front of the back of our house. So let's take a look at my sewing machine. I got this half off after Thanksgiving one year. They're normally around 70 some dollars. It's just a brother sewing machine. You can see easy stitches. My stitch length to the right is set on four. I'm on zero so it's not a zigzag stitch. Okay, my tension here is set on four. And again, I my machine likes all polyester thread. It's the cheapness of the machine. I don't know. I do have a nicer machine if I'm sewing fabrics. Sewing papers, just cheapy. I put it at this angle for you so you can see just nice and easy, just like you're sewing on fabric. Just sew normally. Don't worry about it. I use a size 10 or 11 needle, depending on the manufacturer. Some manufacturers, they come in size 10, some are 11. If that doesn't quite work for you, play with your needles. I had to play with mine. Okay, and I found nine was not quite above 11, like a 12 to 14 was too big. So play with it. A nine might work better for you on your machine. So once it's sewn here, I am distressing along the edges, just like in the last project and I'll do in the other projects. And here's what it looks like with and without the distressing. You can decide what you like. All right, so I'm going to take some of this Dixie Belt chalk paint, mix it with a little water and my fan brush tap off the excess and then I'm going to tap my fan brush to add a little bit of splattering to my pieces of paper here. This is what it looks like. I love it because it's just a real light splattering. And then we're going to go ahead and just glue our paper to the back and the front side. I'm going to add a little home word I did with my Cricut Explore 3 machine. All of these projects today, you could totally use letter stickers. You could use, I know Dollar Tree has rub-ons. They have uh, sticker quotes. You could use anything like that and you can put on it what you want. So I've got that on there, glued the front paper onto the front of that, and I'm going to add that little wood heart, and then I'm going to use some twine from Dollar Tree. I'm going to wrap it around, oh, three or four times here. I'm not going to cut it off the twine ball yet till I figure out how much I need. Decide how many times I want to wrap it around. Maybe I'm going to do three. <laughs> I'm going to use these wood beads. Our Dollar Tree just got in wood uh, round ones and square ones. I love them because they're already a little bit whitewashed. Twi tie that twine into a bow kind of to the left side. And I'm going to add my beads. I picked up like eight of those strands of round beads and about six of the square ones. So glad ours got it in. I'm going to tie a knot, cut off the excess at the end of each bead so that the bead doesn't fall off. And then once I do that, this project is complete. Let's move on to project number three. For this project, we're going on to our little house that we have made into a tag. I've already drilled a hole at the top. I thought I did that on camera and I apologize. I did not, but I just drilled a hole in the center of it. Now, of course, I'm just painting it with the same drop cloth uh, paint by Dixie Bell I'll use throughout all the projects today. 
And then I've got my paper already sewn. We already saw how we did that. So now I'm just kind of distressing along the edges. And then here I come back in with my splatters. I always like to take my fan brush and when I dip it in the paint, tap off the excess first before I tap it to splatter. That way you get tiny little splatters. So just a little hint there. Using my crop it out here, I'm going to punch a hole in my tags that line up with the hole in the wood tag and then get those glued on. And then I'm going to come in with a washer here. I just bought a bag of these at the hardware store. I didn't paint it. I left it. Probably should have painted it, but I left it. <laughs> and get that glued on and center that hole. And then again, I'm using a Cricut Quote here to put on. Now, if you're using your Cricut Quote here and you're using Beacon Fabri-Tac glue, make sure if you've glued your paper on first and then you're putting the quote on as I did, that the glue is completely dry underneath or you're not going to get those letters to stick because it's something with the wetness of the glue underneath the paper trying to get that uh, transfer paper off. It's weird. So either let your glue set to put that on or as I did here, you see it came off really easy or put the quote on first before you glue your paper on. So I'm putting in some brown twine here and some ribbon and of course a couple of beads again, but at the end when you see everything all set up in the reveal, I change it to white twine and a different color ribbon. So um, take that into account, it's gonna look a little bit different. I wasn't liking the brown twine on it. And I put this wired ribbon, but then I decided I didn't like this wired ribbon. I still use a cream color ribbon, but again, I go with a white twine first. Once this is all done, this project is complete. So let's move on to a very quick project number four. For this project, we're coming in with that little sign that had the rope on it, and I'm just painting it up. And I'm using a Jenga block. You can use any kind of thing for the back because I want to the sign to set upright. So I'm using, this is actually a regular Jenga block from a game, but you could use one of the ones from Dollar Tree. And I've got two pieces of paper here for front and back. And again, just sewing on it, change the view so you could see it here, nice and easy. I just kind of get a lot of questions on this. I, I just can't reveal how easy it is to sew on paper. Really, it is just like sewing through fabric once you find the right size needle that kind of works with your machine. And then we're going to go ahead and glue this paper on the back. And we'll go ahead and glue the paper on the front. And here's where I didn't let the glue uh, dry long enough. So I kind of get this put on here and I skip to it because it took me like half an hour to get this transfer paper off once I rubbed it. It would not stick while that glue was wet. So let your glue dry. And now you can see I'm pushing the letters down to make sure it's stuck. I'm going to glue the little Jenga block onto the back at the bottom in the center. And this project is complete. So are we having some fun yet? I wanted some really quick and easy to assemble but beautiful home decor projects for you today. So with that said, let's move on to project number five. For this project, I used a piece of cardboard here and I cut a tag shape. It's about a two by three size. You could totally use like a piece of foam board here. And then I've got my three wood blocks here that I've cut down and I'm gonna mark on here where I don't want to paint because I'm gonna wood glue this together. And then I'm coming in with my Dixie Belle chalk paint, of course, in the color drop cloth and paint all the edges that are not marked with an X. And remember, these came off of those 10 inch long slat boards that I cut directly in half. You actually get four boards out of it, so you could make a book stack of four. This is going to be a little mini book stack. Okay, and then painting around just the edges of my tags here. And then I'm going to come in with my wood glue. I've distressed it all here, as you can see, around all the edges. Want to look at all farmhouse and rustic. Coming in with my wood glue, I like to just kind of paint it on with a paintbrush. It gets a nice thin layer here. And then, of course, once I'm done with that wood glue, I directly go and wash my paintbrush out or that paintbrush is ruined. And then I will use some clamps once I get it into position to uh, clamp it and let it set for a good half hour or so before we work on it. I like this little, it's thin or narrow, but it looks totally like a teeny little book stack from the front. All right, so I've got some paper I cut and sewn to fit the tag and, of course, splattered it. And then uh, I'm going to glue it down with my Beacon Fabri-Tac glue. And now I'm placing my word on here before I glue the paper down. I'll have all the fonts listed to my quotes and everything in the description box. Again, letter stickers or rub-ons or, or, or um, you know, Dollar Tree has lots of word stickers you could use. Any of that will work. And then I'm going to go ahead and place the quote-unquote titles of my books to the right edge of my wood stack here. So basically, this is going to say home is where my heart is. 
I kind of wanted my theme of this to be like home and family. And of course, you don't even have to make the tiered tray. I should have said that from the very beginning. You can make all these little pieces and just set it in amongst other decor, not even make a tiered tray. Okay? But I like the thought of making a tiered tray. <laughs> There's my book stack ready. And then I'm going to take some brown twine. No, I didn't change the color of this at the end. <laughs> and wrap it around the top of my book stack a couple of times here. And then I'll tie a little bow here at the left edge. And because I don't want my twine to, uh, you know, move, I'll go ahead and glue that down on the top and bottom. I'm flip it over here. Now the twine here is kind of thick, so this book stack isn't going to sit properly. It's going to want to lean where the twine isn't, right? And I'm kind of gluing my bow upright. Back to my thought. So I'm using like a little coffee stir stick here. I'll cut it to the length I need and then glue it on the other side where the twine isn't. And now my little book stack will lay level. And you, of course, could use a regular popsicle stick if you don't have these coffee stir sticks. Using my crocodile here to cut a hole in my tag and a little bulb pin here. I get these at Walmart in the sewing section, or you can order them online at Walmart or order them from Amazon. And I'm going to clip it to the center of my bow. And then again, I'm going to add a couple of beads. No, I don't add beads on everything. Only on like three things because everything looks good in odd numbers, right? <laughs> so beads are only on three of these pieces. And then I'll tie a little knot, of course, at the end. So that again, the bead doesn't fall off. And then once I do that, this quick and easy, cute little book stack is complete. What home decor ensemble doesn't need a cute little mini pillow? So let's move on to project number six. For this project, we're going to use a five by five pattern piece here. You're going to need two pieces of fabric, of course, and I'm just going to kind of roughly cut it out in that five by five shape. I'm not trying to be real perfect with it because I want it to look really rustic. And then I'm just going around both pieces and pulling off the threads around each side just to give it that little bit of a rustic touch. You can see how that looks here. And then I'm going to use a piece of cream color felt here. You could use this white from Dollar Tree. I just want to mine in a cream color. I'm going to show you how to make a little rolled rose. So you're going to start out by just cutting a piece of your felt into a circle shape. I start out too big and I end up cutting it down and so it cuts into about a five inch uh, diameter here for our circle. And then you're going to start along one edge and you're just going to start making little rounded scallop pieces here. Go all the way around making them as big as you want. Just scallop it with your scissors all the way around and right before you get to your first one here, you're going to see here I'm going nice and slow. I stop here. And then I'm going to come cut off that little bit of an excess just to give us a little starting point. This is where we start. See how it looks here? I kind of go all the way around and stop where I started and then make a little tail and cut off the excess. Now you're going to go in and I went about an inch width all the way around and you're just going to continue to cut these scallops all the way around till we start getting to the center. You don't have to be neat about it. You don't have to be perfect. As you can see what it's looking like here. Just cut your little scallops till we get to the center. And I'll show you here at the center what we want it to look like. Some are bigger, some are smaller. The more offset it is, the cuter it looks. When you get to the end, you kind of come to this little circle. Leave that, okay? I'm going to show you what it looks like all wound up, just like this. So we've got a nice, cute little scallop shape. This is what you want to start with, okay? Take some tweezers. Now you can do this whole thing with tweezers. I'll show you a little bit. Grab at the very end and hold your tweezers so they're shut. And as you're holding your tweezers, keeping them shut, you twist your flower. Like I said, you can do this to the very, very end. But if you do, it's going to make you a little tight flower like this. Okay? I'm going to make it a little looser. I'm going to start with the tweezers so I get that end really inside, nice and tight. And then I'm just going to start rolling it together by hand just nice and loose you can see how kind of floppy it is in the center just like that kind of keeping your bottom together all right so if you kind of have a finger of your left hand on the bottom and your right hand is winding it around so it kind of keeps those bottom piece together 
This is what it looks like, nice and loose, cute flower. And when you turn it over, we have that little round bottom, right? This is what's going to glue and hold all that centerpiece together. So I'm going to use my Beacon Fabri-Tac glue here. It's so simple, you guys. You, do, you can do this and not even make scallops. Just cut a spiral. And I'm going to put a little bit under right here underneath that circle, just kind of where that last little petal did and then glue that together. You can use hot glue here as well. And right at the end, because I rolled it loosely, I'm just going to add just a tiny bit right here because I can see I didn't get it under that circle. And here's our little flower. Again, though, you could just make that spiral and not even cut scallops, and it looks super, super cute doing the same process. Let's get our pillow assembled using Beacon Fabri-Tac glue or hot glue. If you're not a sewer, you're going to glue down a three full sides and then the last side only glue down about halfway so you have a nice little opening here okay of course y'all know i'm going to take mine to the sewing machine doing the same process i'm going to sew down three sides completely and then when i get to that fourth side i'm only going to sew down about halfway and I love sewing pillows like this and leaving those raw tattered edges out because it's easy. You don't have to sew it and then turn it inside out. I think it looks more farmhouse this way. Here's my open edge. And then of course, obviously what's next is we're gonna stuff our pillow. Just gonna use some uh, batting here and stuff it inside. Little cotton batting here. Yeah, this is the easiest way to sew a pillow to me. It just gives it character. I don't have to pin it and then sew it and then turn it inside out so all my raw edges are hidden. I think it looks super cute. Once you get it stuffed, you can glue your way to the closure or, again, take it to your sewing machine. It's just the cutest little pillow. I just think it's so cute. Got it all ready here. I just love how it turned out. I'm going to use some of this, uh, you know, ribbon I love that I got from Walmart. You could wrap it all the way around like this. I thought about it. That's why I cut it to fit all the way around, you know, and then your flower could go in the center. But then I decided I don't want it wrapped all the way around, so I just kind of cut off a little piece. Just kind of leave it hanging. <laughs> why not? That's how I'll do it and set the flower in the center. So we'll go ahead and glue this little ribbon down. Glue our little flower down. You could leave it just like this. Or you could add a bow using white twine from Walmart, which I'm going to add. I'm also going to add one of these. It's another little scrapbooking treasure. They're called Quote Chips from Tim Holtz Ideology. Get them in the scrapbooking section. They come with a bag of all sorts of little quotes and stuff like that. I chose the documented word because I thought it would be cute. It kind of was like goes with the other quotes like, home is where my heart is. It's documented. It's documented that every family has a story. So that's why I chose that word. I got that glued on and I'm gluing my white twine bow right up above that. And that makes the stinking cute mini pillow complete. So let's move on to our last. This is so easy. If you blink, you'll miss it. Project number seven. Our Dollar Tree got in these oh so cute birds. I love the pink one. It's my favorite. I bought two of them, <laughs> but I went ahead and got a white one. It's a little too shiny, so I'm just going to kind of, you know, farmhouse it up. I'm bringing in my Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color drop cloth, of course. I'm going to bring in some baking soda. Now, there's no rhyme or reason to my measurements. I just measured it until I got my paint to kind of the thickness I wanted, you know, about twice as thick as it originally went into the container as just paint. And once you get it painted on, the texture is even way thicker than it looks like here when it's being mixed up. So, you know, take that into account. This is what it looks like. Hardly looks like any texture, right? But believe me, it's a lot. I'm going to use a sponge brush to put this on versus a regular paintbrush. Because if you use a regular paintbrush, it kind of paints it on and then pulls it right back off because of that slick surface. So I would suggest some kind of sponge brush. And I kind of daub it on. Even here, as I am daubing it on, it still doesn't look as thick as when it dries. So again, take that into account when you're mixing this stuff up. But I do like how it turns out. I think it's so super cute. This project is literally almost done remember what i said at the beginning it's so easy if you blink you'll miss it <laughs> so just keep doing it you could do a couple of layers if you want however you want to go about it it's your choice how you paint this bird or of course leave it unpainted he is just adorable the way he is but once i get all this paint on just the way i want it this project is complete well, I hope you like all the projects I came up with today. Leave me a comment down below and let me know which one of these projects do you want to make like yesterday. 
okay? <laughs> Please give this video a thumbs up. And if you walked in here, just kind of stumbled in, you're like, hey, I'm kind of digging what this chick is making, make sure before you click off, you hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on a single video from me. Before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. Let's talk about the character of Jesus for a moment. We know that he's absolute perfect, and we also know that he felt pain. Because of one moment in the garden with Adam and Eve, he endeavored to give us another chance to be with him forever and to have that relationship with him by enduring the pain of the cross and then sitting down at the right hand throne of God. And in doing so, we have complete joy of knowing that we have a small piece of real estate in heaven with him forevermore. But does he really understand our grief, our sadness, our complete loss of joy because of circumstance we might currently be in? Let's take a look at a story in the book of John and three people in his life, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. The Bible shows us that these were three of his closest relationships with anyone on earth. Because of this personal connection, we get a window into what God feels with us. We can look to this when we wonder where God is and how God feels in the things we suffer. In the story, we come to know that Lazarus is sick. And when Jesus learned from his disciples about this, he stated that Lazarus' sickness wouldn't end in death and that it would reveal a greater glory. And so Jesus didn't go to Lazarus right away. He waited two days. Of course, Lazarus did die. And when Jesus finally went to see him, he found that Lazarus had actually been in the tomb for four days. Moving ahead, scripture records that as Jesus talked with Mary about Lazarus' death, Jesus was deeply moved and troubled. In fact, the book of John, chapter 11, verse 35, it records only two words. Jesus wept. This communicates more about God's character than any other verse. Even though Jesus knew he would raise Lazarus from the dead, bringing a far better joy to the people and glory to God, the grief of Lazarus' family as Jesus talked with them prior moved Jesus to tears. In one small two-worded verse, we see God's human nature. So when looking into our time right now, we see that even when God knows joy is coming, he accompanies us in our sadness that this life brings. We have a God who weeps because he knows about devastation and loss firsthand. He knows how difficulties in our life can steal our joy. So you need to know that Jesus understands your pain, that he is with you wherever you are in this life. When you go through pain and disappointment, you have a God who feels those things with you because he was human once. But remember, he is also God and all powerful. Hold on to that. And remember that no matter how things look, he can bring you through to victory, giving you a greater joy just up ahead. I thank you for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.